Hey, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. We're getting a lot of calls about our tube and shell heat exchangers that we sell for outdoor wood boilers, but people want to use them for just their traditional indoor boilers that they have in their homes, heating their homes in the winter. So they asked if we could use these tube and shells to hook them up to their pools to heat uh, their swimming pools. Yes, you can. It's, it's, there's a couple things that you need to can take into consideration, which I'll go over here with, but the tube and shells, Fundamentally, it's a boiler and it, it does the same thing, but it's using a fossil fuel, a propane or a oil or a natural gas. But the things that you need to take into consideration is for heating a pool. So I'm gonna not worry about this at this point, but the things that you need to take into consideration is what kind of pool you have. Now, if you have a saltwater pool, uh, natural pools, or even a chlorinated pool, the heat exchanger is important to order the heat exchanger based on that application. So taking that into consideration, your application, you now are going to choose the heat exchanger that fits your application. And in this case, this is where my tube and shell is. Fundamentally, they're all about the same looking. Um, they have the concept of in and out for the pool, in and out for your boiler. So in this application, the pool, water is gonna come off the pool and it's go into the heat exchanger and then out to the filter. Now you want it, in this place before the filter and slash uh, what they call the dosing systems. Because the dosing systems, if you put the heat exchanger over here, is very the water becomes very toxic. So you wanna keep the heat exchanger away from that. So once you have placed it where it is, then you're gonna to, you're going to connect it to your indoor traditional boiler. And it's a really simple concept. Again, you have a supply and a return from your indoor boiler. You're going to come out of the supply, you're going to put it into the, uh, one of the inlets of the tube and shell, and then you're going to return it to be reheated uh, back again. You're also going to need a pump, and where you put the pump on here is based on your application. Another thing you might want to consider is that the pump, you, well, let me back up, because one of the other things is, do you really want to bring the pool water all the way to your inside of your boiler inside your house, if you have a pipe failure, that pool is gonna empty in your house, okay? Problem. If you bring the boiler loop to the pool, then you've gotta worry about losing a lot of heat getting it to the pool in the tube of the water line. So I recommended insulated piping. So if you do do this, connect your two pecs. I like the pecs because it's flexible and easy. Bury it in the ground with insulated pipe to the heat exchanger mounted on the pool area. That is what I would recommend. You do it the way you would like, whatever fits best in your application. So taking that into consideration, you design what you would like to do. In my application, I brought the boiler water to the pool and brought it back. In that case, I ran a pump during daylight hours with a timer. So the concept is, is that I'm not heating the pool at night, bad, not good to heat at night because the cold air and the moving of the surface water is you're gonna lose a lot of heat even though you're trying to heat it. Turn off the heat at night, put your solar cover on the pool, only heat the pool during daylight hours with the solar cover on if you can, if possible. Things to consider. Based on the size of the heat exchanger to heat your pool, for example, you might, not, you might need 300,000 BTUs to heat that pool. Your inside boiler might be 200,000 BTUs. That means if you put on a 300,000 BTU heat exchanger, it's gonna be, it'll suck too much heat out of the indoor boiler because it's sucking and putting it into the pool and it's gonna drag this boiler down. It will not be able to keep up with the demand of the pool. What that is, is that is called a condensating boiler. Once the water Returning to the boiler is less than 147.5 degrees. It's called a condensating boiler. It's like a glass of hot or cold water on a hot summer day. It wets, it, it drips, and it rusts your boiler, which will cause it to fail. Simple solution to that is an aquastat bounded to the return line from the heat exchanger that says once it drops to 150 degrees, stop the heating system. 
turn off the pump that's circulating the water around the heat exchanger, turn off the pump from the wood boiler or the indoor boiler, something, stop the heating. And then once it gets back up in temperature, that aquasat say, okay, I'm back up in temperature, start heating again. So there's several ways to do that, but that needs to be resolved. A simple aquasat, which is $100 uh, and, uh, and have it connected to a pump, is, it's just that simple. Fundamentally, it's not hard, but it's, it's, you've got to take the considerations into play. Do you want the pool water coming to the house, house coming to the pool? Um, make sure the heat exchangers are right. Uh, the condensating boiler. Um, he, the pools are usually a very large demand. And again, if you go with a smaller heat exchanger, it's going to take longer to heat that pool, three, four days, instead of going with a large heat exchanger, which will drag this boiler down into trouble areas. You might want to consider trying to find something in the middle and make it work, or even maybe with a smaller and plan to heat the pool over three or four days, especially in the spring. Uh, once you get it up to its, its range, temperature range, it's very easy to maintain. I hope that helped. And please, if you have any questions or anything, write them in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button. And also, I'd love to hear any new video ideas. Also write that down in the comments. Thank you and happy heating.